just give that a second to start recording. Perfect. Hey everybody, um, I'm Meredith Wynes, self-sabotage coach and expert. Um, and I'd like to welcome today to this quick chat, which Pete's famous for in his own world, um, to discuss Pete's journey and perhaps some of his experiences with his own self-sabotage over the years and the strategies and ideas that he's um, implemented to get over them. And um, my experience with you and watching, listening to your um, podcasts and information over the years is you've had some quite a journey um, as many of us have and to see where you've where you are now and what you're achieving and what you're looking to do in the future um, I'd love to hear uh, some of your journey if you'd like to share that with us yeah for sure where would you like to start and anything in particular um, okay so typically self-sabotage behaviors are negative self-talk um, we sabotage our relationships, we sabotage our finances, um, and it all sort of comes from a bit of a, a carryover from childhood um, as a way, a means of coping. Um, and these sort of behaviours come out in the open when we're adults, um, alcohol, drugs, you know, and different types of addictions. Um, yeah. For sure. And first, thanks for having me on, Meredith, and g'day, everybody that's listening. Kiora. And uh, yeah, I've done it all. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol, drugs, you name it. I've, I've been down that path. Yeah. Uh, money. Uh, yeah. It's, it's the human experience that yeah. we, you know, I, I, I have no judgment over it, except that uh, I'm very grateful for all the experiences that I've, that I've, I've had in this, ex this life so far. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've, I've explored overworking to the point of exhaustion. Mm. Uh, workaholic, somebody would have maybe called me. I worked 80 to 100 hour weeks for nearly 20 years, for 20 mm. years, you know, kitchen, you know, trying to be the best chef that I could and not go broke at the same time. Yeah. I've, I've owned a nightclub for 10 years in the red light district of King's Cross in Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. And in that experience, I also got to witness the and, and fully experience the darkness of the night mm. in that area and whether that was uh, drugs and sex and everything that that entails mm. I've lived that and I've experienced it and I'm very very grateful for that experience yeah. uh, I've also had an amazing experience of being a father and a husband and a a uh, custodian of the land with my yeah. wife and um, being an advocate for health and wellness mm. uh, and I'm very grateful for that experience as well and yeah. uh, I've, I've managed to explore many realms and uh, many feelings in this human experience from the joyous to the darkest possible experiences that we can mm. we can um, feel in our being yeah and they're all gifts absolutely they're, they're all gifts yeah. you know and it's <clears throat> you know some people may need to go through the experience of pain to to realize that they don't want it anymore yeah you know, if you don't know what you don't want because you haven't experienced it then how do you know that's what, right mm. what you know there's a lot of people out there and i was one of them that numb was uh, my default mm -hmm. for periods of time in my life and, and still can be that experience. And, and, you know, sometimes we need to jolt ourselves out of that to actually feel, mm. you know, whether it be anger or frustration or resentment or jealousy or anger or mm. despair. Yeah. And, but at the same time to feel joy and wonder and jubilation and celebration and love and, and happiness and all of these things. And I, I honestly believe our human journey is to experience it all. Yeah. And it's not to avoid it. And it's not to shame it mm. that we get angry or that we feel emotionally unstable at times. It's to, okay, cool. Well, there's what's the lesson in this? Mm. Why am I feeling like this? Why am I getting angry at the television screen or a politician or somebody 
why am I projecting my frustration out there? Mm. What, have I, what haven't I uncovered yet for myself or what am I still being challenged by? So my self-sabotage, I've done it all, you know, I, yeah. I have. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and I will probably <laughs> continue to do it. Yeah, you know, yeah, because every time we 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 go through a, a cycle of experience, inflection, reflection, understanding, awareness, or conscious awareness, and then we mm-hmm. can grow from it. We get through one layer, and then all of a sudden we're into another another reality. Yeah, it's like okay, well here we go. Yeah. Everything's sailing along really nicely, and then all of a sudden something might come up, and Bang. we might do it. <laughs> we might consciously create it, yeah. Or it may be something that comes from an external source, mm. whether it be a family member, whether it be a, a, a situation such as the, a pandemic, where we did what that we didn't see coming. Now we're seeing a vaccination rollout, and now we're sitting here going okay well this is interesting where's this going because Mm -hmm. you hear people talking about the agenda 2030 and potentially down the track that people all live in cities won't be able to live on the land we will all be tracked and traced and we'll have a social credit score so we can't have free speech you know what's that an invitation for what's that an opportunity uh is society self-sabotaging itself and if so, what does that mean as a society? How do we go through this reevaluation and learning? Mm-hmm. Not individually, that's part of it, but collectively. Where have we been selfish in our experience where perhaps we haven't connected enough with our community? That this is what an invitation for us to create community. That could be what this is all about. Maybe over the last year, we've seen a disconnection from nature Massively. Over, mm-hmm. over, over decades, over centuries, over however yeah. many, over millennia, whatever it may be. Is this an invitation now to reconnect? You know, are we self-sabotaging the planet collectively and individually? Mm. You know, so there's, there's, there's a lot to unpack in that. Mm. And, you know, when, when we do take a, uh, expand and look out and, and let's just say we take Australia for instance at the moment you know we know that we're one of the unhealthiest countries in the world of population mm. why is that culturally what, what, what's going on here New Zealand what's going on there Individually, we can make our own choices. If you choose to, Meredith, and anybody that's listening, you can feed yourself well. You Mm. can grow your own food if you choose to. You can be as self-sustainable as you like, depending on your current situation. Somebody might just grow a tomato plant on their balcony. Somebody might be able to get some chickens in their backyard. (laughs) That's the best form of rebellion, isn't it? Just having Uh, that pot of herbs on your windowsill. (laughs) Another form of rebellion is supporting a farmer that you can uh, go in and buy half a cow and put it in your chest freezer when it's time yep. once a That's year. That's what for I have. <laughs> yeah, that, that, could, that could be a source of helping. But, you mm-hmm. know, when the population doesn't do it the same way, but then the population is sick and unhealthy and then a vaccine comes out because people are sick and unhealthy. Mm. You and I don't have to worry about a virus whatever virus it is in the world. No. Nope. Ain't going to do anything to me ever. But the population that's out there, what will a dangerous virus, if you believe in them, what will that do to somebody that's got comorbidities, that's mm-hmm. overweight, obese, got autoimmune disease, got cancer, got heart disease, got depression, anxiety, mental health issues. And also what got happened? by fear. Oh yeah, with a with an underlying belief of lack, mm. not of abundance, of scarcity. Whether it be financial, whether it be whatever it may be, lack of love for mm. themselves, lack of love for others, a disdain for the world in which they live in. If you do not appreciate and, and find this as a gift, you may have disdain for the world. Mm. 
I was at um, taking my kid, my daughters to touch football the other day. Centennial Park in Sydney. The amount of rubbish that was around after the last group had been in there. Plastic water bottles everywhere. It's like, fuck, you've got a disdain for the environment, for nature. What does it mm. say about yourself? Mm. Yeah. But we can see examples of these forms of self-sabotage wherever we choose to look, if that's what's on our radar. Yep. But we could also see the exact opposite. Yep. The self-celebration, the self-love, <laughs> the communal love, if we have our radars tuned to that too. Yep. So we so have view to be it, very careful. Change your perception. Yeah. Change your perception according to the experiences that you've been exposed to and how you yeah. choose to then let them flow out and the vibration that you're giving out. You yeah, know? it's very interesting, yeah. you know, uh, and, and the role that you're in as well and, and many others that would come to you, you know, how much of it has been to be a victim in our, of our own circumstances or perceived circumstances that mm. we can become a victim to ourselves. Completely. <laughs> we, we, as you, as you say, you know, a lot of people like to blame and point the finger at others. You know, if only my father didn't do that to me, or if only my mother had have listened to me and gave me love when, I, when I bruised my knee or grazed my knee off the bike. All I wanted was a hug and understanding. And they mm. told me that I'm clumsy, that I'm always hurting myself. What about that child that wasn't celebrated of being a free thinker that didn't conform to the rules at school mm. because they didn't fit into that, that system doesn't make them a bad student. No, nope. just means that that system could be not the right thing for that for that child, but that child could have been labelled uh, a nuisance, troublemaker, a, dis a, a disruptor, <laughs> a troublemaker, stu stupid. I was a troublemaker, <laughs> and I don't regret a moment of it because that all these experiences that I've been exposed to personally, you know, drugs, alcohol, abusive relationships, all of that, those were my greatest teachers. And all that pain was a guide. And, it was, and now I realize it was never a goblin. You know, it was just part of this human experience to help with letting go of trying to control the outcomes all the time and actually just mm. trusting, just trusting and having that little glim, that little glimmer of light that can't actually ever be dimmed. Even in my darkest moments when I didn't want to get out of bed and I didn't want to open my eyes my higher self just said just sleep you can never dim that light tomorrow is going to be better and then from that point forward that section of my life was just up and up and it was just the beauty of the world was blinding <laughs> you know so um i think that overcoming those fears of why did this happen to me and instead thinking about it like Peter Crone, the beautiful Peter Crone, if it was supposed to happen any other way, then it would have, but it didn't, you know? We can have these experiences to mold us negatively, or like you say, take away from it, actually, what is this showing me? This is showing me the light being shone back inward to remind you just how infinite and incredible you are. So if my experiences have taught me anything, it's that, you know, not to be afraid of that pain and confronting it head on and it's all its messiness. <laughs> you know, I had a moment just this morning and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've got to get my shit together. I'm talking to one of the most incredible human beings on the planet. <laughs> but then it's like, but that's me. It's me being raw and authentic and like actually going, oh my goodness, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so we're, yeah. we're all incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the secret. That's the that's the, and it's just the remembering and the reminding, and that's what I think people are so taken away with this hideous pop culture that's just infiltrated every cell of every being, you know. Well, not and, every being. Well, no, but there are those that have awakened to it and switched off, and plugged back into nature, you know. But there's nothing wrong with them either. 
yeah. for going down that journey. If they've, if you know, that's part of the part of our journey is, mm-hmm. you know, if, if if we're stepping into this role of wanting to help others, yeah, we we have to allow others to be them. Absolutely. You know, if if yeah. if the majority of the population want to feed themselves with food that's going to poison them and shorten their life experience and put them into greater pain and choose to listen to information that may not be factual and that is programming. Mm. And if they choose to disrespect nature and themselves, then allow that and send them love and compassion in that journey Mm. because it's not their fault. (laughs) Well, well, uh, I, I, I disagree with that one. Mm. They have the, they have, They've chosen that path. Mm. When we fault is a is a is again, it's like blaming. It's mm. it's 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 labeling somebody as doing something wrong. If we can accept that everything that everybody's doing is perfect for them at this particular point in time on their journey, then yeah, there at is least no go judgment. With that. Yeah, it's like if if you came into this planet to experience that much pain. Fuck, kudos to you. Mm, that's brave. I got, I got, you know, I got family members <laughs> and I just, you know, I'm like, they've chosen that experience. Mm. And it's not like they don't know that there's other ways out there, out of that pain, mm. out of that suffering, out of that uncomfortable experience of reality. Mm. But for them to work through that pain, to go to, potentially where we may sit, that might be too fucking hard for them. Yep. That might it's just not an mean, easy path. It's not an easy path. Well, for some, they're, 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 that's, that's their journey. Mm. That's their journey. And what I've come to realise is that we don't know what the ripple effect of somebody having that journey is for that person. Mm. And they're in their community, in their family, in with their children, mm. witnessing a parent that may be self-sabotaging. We've seen it with alcoholics, with, with abusive parents, that the child will come out a very different person than not a clone or a copy of their parent. Yeah. But we've also seen the exact opposite, where a child will repeat the sins of the parents. And I don't like to call them the sins. I'm just using that as a terminology because that's <laughs> yeah. just what came, came to think, you know. And maybe that generation has to go, maybe that family lineage has to go through that three or four or five or ten times before somebody says, you know what, that's not my journey in life. Mm. I've witnessed that with my grandparents and parents and brothers and sisters. And you know what, that's not my path. neither a right or wrong approaches yep. to life it just is and uh you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I love it all I, it's like fuck i you, know right you, you're just you in joke. awe of of the design or no design or control or no control like relax nothing is under control <laughs> I, I, like we started this conversation i've i've experienced extreme darkness in the in those those realms Mm. grateful for it fuck yeah that's pretty great that was a wild experience do i want to do that for the rest of my life (laughs) no (laughs) am i but if i did experience was there going to be a part of me that was like i wonder what that's like exactly yeah i wonder what that's like Uh, now i know what it's like i'm like that was what a wild trip that is yeah now my wife and i joke about this all the time every day we're like (laughs) how's this for a trip hey you actually don't have to ingest anything anymore yeah. <laughs> in this reality. This is the greatest psychedelic trip I've ever been on. And I am 100% sober. Yeah, no. And, and last year it came to me because for three years prior to that, I, uh, two to three years prior, I'd been experiencing different psychedelics and different uh, reality states. And because I wanted to understand more because it seemed to be coming into my awareness that it was a tool for mm-hmm. uh, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual exploration and growth. 
Yeah, why and... wouldn't you want to try that, right? <laughs> well, it's 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 challenging. Not but... for the faint-hearted. <laughs> But then, but then when coronavirus and this pandemic entered this reality, my, my um, intuition was like, no, 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 you don't need to go into any other realms. This, this, this realm is now yeah. where you're going to be doing the work, right? This is the realm where you're going to be doing the work because you've explored the other dimensions for now. I may go back there, but right now your work is here in this physical plane yeah. when this is such a unusual period of human history. You want to, you want to be, this is the trip. We don't know what the end result is going to be in this. We don't know how dark it's going to get collectively yeah. or individually. We don't know how much light is going to come in at the, at the same time all of a sudden, or, you know, is there somebody coming to save us? Or do we all have to step up? If we don't step up, what's going to happen? Are people going to get locked up because they haven't been vaccinated? What's going to happen? I have no idea. And it's so freaking exciting. That's the, the best so, part though, right? <laughs> it's the movie every, that you don't know the ending, you cannot predict it. Every so, day I'm like, yeah. Oh, wow, there's something else. <laughs> you couldn't write a script for this like even if you tried right <laughs> i didn't see that coming <laughs> yeah. yeah um i think there was probably just one like one pressing question we're well, not pressing but um what is your what is your idea of the perfect um moment in time with your family what does that oh. look like it's it's ever changing yeah it's ever changing yeah. you know um my wife nick just we just got a, a new horse for, yeah uh, saw that <laughs> and, and, it, and, it, and it, yeah oh, beautiful <laughs> it actually looks like that and uh you'll have to send me the photo of that um yeah that painting and you know witnessing her with the, with the new addition to the herd is um yeah. is beautiful to witness you know she's yeah she is um, creating a, a wonderful relationship with that. So, mm. you know, over the last week, that's been a powerful thing to witness, mm. you know, and I, I'm in awe of that connection and relationship that is uh, manifesting there. Mm. You know, um, I'm here in Sydney this week with, with my daughters that are now 16 and 14 and a half, and I had a swim with them yesterday off the, off the rocks, and they, I was a, a few meters in front of them and they were behind me and I was watching them and they're, they're not kids anymore. You know, they're 16. My daughter just got her, uh, her she passed her learner's uh, driver's license for her theory and now she's driving with an L plate on and my other daughter's sprung up in size and I'm watching them yesterday and the same thing, I'm like, this is magnificent. Mm. Just going for a swim, that we don't, they don't spend as much time with me as they used to because mm. they're independent now. They're breaking free of the, the nest and they're mm. forging their own directions in, in this world and they're making their own decisions instead of having to rely on uh, parental figures such as mm. myself or their mum or Nick or others in our family. Mm. And witnessing that journey for them is, is you know, I'm in awe of that too, just like I'm in awe of Nick and her new journey. Yeah. So we're always, it's always changing. So to answer your question, now is always the best time. Yep. Because to think that the best time was in the past, like a lot of, I hear a lot of parents say that, fucking hell, like what a way to be a, down on, so on limiting life. it's so limiting though isn't it like, to see it that and, way and when i hear people go well childhood was the best years of your life it's like mm, that was then I, this is now every, every, every year be the best <laughs> yeah. year of your life every moment be the best my wife yeah. nick always says today's going to be the best day i've ever had yep he says it every day today's mm -hmm. going to be the best day 
today's going to be the best day. Today's going to be the best day. I say so. it to my children every morning before we go and do our thing for the day. Yeah, today is just pure possibility. Okay. And um, yeah. What, what and will be, will be. Amazement and wonder. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me. I know you're an incredibly busy man. And um, I just want to hope that we can connect again one day and, and check in and um, compare notes. That would be at. lovely. <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for listening. And uh, have a wonderful time. Good luck picking up your children today and enjoy yeah, that yeah. adventure. Yeah. Thanks, Pete. See you, everybody. Thank you so much.